Hey folks, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is almost 6 years old. Its sequel, Tears of the Kingdom, will begin its journey in around 3 months from now. It is almost time for Breath of the Wild to pass the torch. The Nintendo Switch's first major release will forever be one to remember. This game will go down in history as one of the greatest of all time. However, when a game is extremely successful, following it up can be a difficult task, matching it being even harder, and topping it being near impossible. In today's video, I would like to discuss everything that comes with a video game passing the torch to its sequel, with our focus being Breath of the Wild passing the torch to Tears of the Kingdom. To help me in this colossal task, I am joined by Pixel Fusion Productions, who you may know from a recent video on his channel I featured in, or one of the many awesome Zelda Tuber discussions he hosts. If not, allow me to introduce you. Why, thank you, Adam. I'm Cornelius Belmont, also Pixel Fusion, and I make the Let's Talk About series, Judgment Time, and Let's Chat About podcast. Thank you for having me on the show. It really means a lot. So, passing the torch, huh? I have more than a few things to say about that with the new game on the horizon. So, let's get started. I'm very happy to have you on. As is tradition on my channel, you have the honors of reading my famous line. Take it away. Oh, of course. <clears throat> Be sure to go get yourself a snack or drink and send them in to be featured right here. And also be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps the channel out. And let's get into it. This video will go through four segments. Firstly, how Breath of the Wild reinvented Zelda games and how that'll affect Tears of the Kingdom. Secondly, will Tears of the Kingdom be able to live up to Breath of the Wild? Thirdly, what happens to Breath of the Wild once Tears of the Kingdom releases, and then a conclusion. To start off, let's look back at how Breath of the Wild made its way into the series and began its reign with the Zelda Torch. The game was huge for the series and Nintendo, reigniting a series with declining sales and changing the format up entirely. I'll ask you this question to get us started. How do you see Breath of the Wild's reinvention of the Zelda series affecting Tears of the Kingdom? This sequel will only be the second game in this new format after all, and that will come with challenges. The biggest thing that came with Breath of the Wild was the sheer scope of the world that was added. At the time of release, it was one of the largest open world games out there, and in many ways, a bit more dense than others. Skyrim is basically always remembered for how big it was, but there was a lot of empty space in that game. In Breath of the Wild, you can't stumble more than 10 feet without bumping into a Korok puzzle, Yiga Assassin, or your sensor alerting you about a nearby shrine. I would say though, for as much as Breath of the Wild reinvented things, it really only did so by taking modern aspects of what was already popular and shoving it into a Zelda setting. I mean, really? The Sheikah Towers are just Ubisoft Towers all over again. And of course there was a big backlash against the removal of classic dungeons, something that we both want back in Tears of the Kingdom in some form or another. The ability to tackle the main quest in any order was also nice, but it cannot be overstated just how much of a risk Nintendo took by doing this, as well as isolating the memories away from the main story. Regardless, I think we're all happy with the way it worked out, and the sales numbers definitely paid off huge for Nintendo. The biggest thing for me personally is that with it being so critically acclaimed, that will automatically put a lot of pressure on Tears of the Kingdom, but that is more something we'll get to shortly. The reinvention of the first game to the series can only boost the sequel. It created a new format which was evidently very successful. It can be built on and made even better. The sequel looks to be a much darker installment, but following similar paths that the first game did. I think it will thrive off of what Breath of the Wild set up. Living up to the hype of anything is going to be hard. In this case, Tears of the Kingdom will be trying to live up to one of the best and most well-received games of all time. Realistically speaking, will Tears of the Kingdom be able to live up to Breath of the Wild? That's really hard to say, HG. The expectations have risen higher than the Sky Islands themselves, and some of those are pretty high if you ask me. If I'm being completely honest, I don't think it can live up to the hype, just like Twilight Princess could never live up to Ocarina of Time. Twilight Princess did very well in the sales department, but that may only be related to the backlash from Wind Waker. Perhaps a similar thing will happen considering the bitterness with Age of Calamity. 
and that might help to elevate Tears of the Kingdom in a similar manner. If I were to say any one thing that would fail to live up to expectations, and this is mainly from the perspective of a lore master slash Zelda tuber, it's going to be that the lore won't address everything that everybody wants. Basically, everybody is trying to blur their vision and see connections with their favorite Zelda title, myself included. Some people really want Link's shield to be a reference to Vati. Others want the Zonai to be related to the Twilight interlopers. I have no doubt that if, and this is a big if, if the mice is important to the game in any way, people will be itching to revive that old theory about his sword being the Lorulian Master Sword again. My point being, everyone wants something and it's unrealistic to expect Nintendo to deliver that. For me, I believe that generally the game can definitely live up to Breath of the Wild. Like you mentioned, with the lore probably not addressing everything everyone wants, there will be certain aspects that are not met, but that doesn't mean the game as a whole can. Breath of the Wild created more questions than it was able to answer for the series, and that worked really well. I think a sequel can be a good game with just its own amazing new contents. In this case, the Sky Islands, Ganondorf, the Underground, and all of the new stuff going on. Answering lore questions from the first game will 100% be present and 100% be awesome, but that isn't what will make this game just as good in my opinion. That's its own story that will do that. The next chapter in the series, going off what we've seen so far and heard online from Nintendo describing the game, I am confident that Tears of the Kingdom will have a fair chance at living up to Breath of the Wild. Of course that does heavily depend on how intriguing and interesting the story itself is, but that's what I mean. I think it'll have a fair chance at it. I don't think Breath of the Wild was insanely good to the point where it can't be topped. There's definitely areas which could be done better and made into an even better game. Once the highly anticipated sequel is out in its full glory and has taken the torch from Breath of the Wild to start its own reign, what happens to Breath of the Wild? Does its relevance fall as it's no longer the in-game, or does its direct connections to Tears of the Kingdom keep it in the loop? Both in terms of general interest, but also in terms of discussing the lore. What do you think, man? To really address this, I think we first need to consider the level of burnout there is for Breath of the Wild. It's been six years. People have built careers over analyzing basically every little thing they can find in the game. So my prediction is that as soon as Tears of the Kingdom comes out, there will be a huge rush to do everything, to find everything, etc. Once that first hype phase wears off, then there will be an urge to look for stronger connections to Breath of the Wild, since it is a direct sequel. That's probably what I'll be doing. The motives for this will either be that they love the game, or they are doing it for new content that they can create. And of course, those theories will build and gain traction. Will people go back and play Breath of the Wild for the sake of playing Breath of the Wild? I'm sad to say I think that is unlikely. Will they revisit it for the sake of lore? Surely in some capacity. With so much of it being available on YouTube or in other forums, I think it's likely to trail off. I do expect a slight resurgence once the Tears of the Kingdom hype wears off. Come 2027, I'm sure nostalgia will kick in and people will revisit it. Oh, and one final thing. If Tears of the Kingdom wraps up the Zelda story, as in, it actually concludes the saga entirely, I have a feeling the hype will trail off faster. Kind of like how people were quick to jump off the Kingdom Hearts train after they finished the third game. That's a very interesting look at it, and I agree with you. For me, the main thing here is that I believe the release of Tears of the Kingdom can and will only boost Breath of the Wild's relevance. A sort of reignition as the casual fans return for the new game, but also for the hardcore fans as it will be needed to connect the lore, history, and whatnot. This will be the most heavily connected sequel in Zelda history, especially given the game will include the exact same world, just with a lot more. You know HD, that's a really good point. There are plenty of people out there who have yet to experience Breath of the Wild, and with this new game, I'm certain there will be plenty more people coming along to play it. As part of the Zelda community, it can often seem like everyone's played it by now, but I'm sure that there are plenty of young kids who haven't touched it yet, not to mention mothers and fathers who simply don't have the time to play their backlog of games. Here's hoping that those people have a chance to experience the game that we collectively love, Breath of the Wild. 
You know, HT, I think going into Tears of the Kingdom, there is a lot of promise. I know I said that there were a lot of expectations that are impossible to meet, but if they do this right, they could really set the stage for something grand. Oh, for sure. I think meeting the heights Breath of the Wild did will be near impossible, but you never know. This game could expand on the first game so much that it ends up being even better. Hyrule is broken. The monarchy is reduced to a single member, with virtually no military force to support it. It has a great foundation for rebuilding. In its direct sequel, I was really hoping that we would see something for rebuilding settlements and improving towns. Once Ganondorf is dealt with, it would be nice to see some follow-up either in DLC or new titles that show the rebuilding and advancement of what we laid out here. I know that there are people out there who adore Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks, but I think burying the past to build something with a clean slate is overrated. I hope that Nintendo isn't trying to wipe away the past timeline with Breath of the Wild and now Tears of the Kingdom, and I sincerely hope that going forward they won't forget what they built here with these two games. They have made something beautiful, and I hope they respect the community enough not to tarnish it. Definitely. The way I would like to conclude here is that Breath of the Wild saved the series in a few different ways. It freshened things up massively, but also fixed the declining sales of the series. The torch was very well relit with Breath of the Wild, and Tears of the Kingdom now has a big task to keep that fire burning. I am confident that it can, and I believe it will. But as everything with this game right now, we'll just have to wait and see. Before wrapping up, I would like to say a massive thank you to Pixel Fusion Productions for joining me in today's video. As mentioned, we did one over on his channel recently, which I've linked below. It's a very interesting theory regarding why Hyrule is dying in Twilight Princess, so be sure to check that out. Thank you, Adam, for having me. Also consider checking out the recent podcast with Bandit Games, Captain Burger's Son, The Bread Pirate, and of course, Hyrule Gamer here we were talking about including traditional dungeons in Tears of the Kingdom. Also make sure to leave a comment down below with what you thought of this video and the whole passing the torch stuff. Will Tears of the Kingdom successfully carry the torch or will it struggle to hold the weight of pressure from its successful predecessor? Again, we'll just have to wait and find out. Be sure to drop a wee like down below if you enjoyed, and also consider subscribing for more fabulous Zelda content all the way up to the release of Tears of the Kingdom and beyond. Follow my social media pages linked below to keep up to date or send in a snack or drink photo. And as always, a huge massive amazing shout out goes to all of my channel supporters. Thanks a ton. Your support really helps me to make these videos week in, week out, all month long, 365 days a year. If you'd like to join them and get yourself a shout out upon joining and your name at the end of every video, then consider supporting via the links below. Thanks for watching. I hope you all have an amazing day or night and until the next time, I've been Hyrule Gamer.